Good afternoon, I'm Shihab Khan. The crisis engulfing the BBC following their suspension of Match of the Day presenter Gary Lineker continues to spread this lunchtime. A growing number of pundits and commentators have refused to work and players say they'll decline interviews in solidarity with Lineker, who was suspended after he refused to apologise for tweets critical of the government. Now, the hosts of Football Focus and Final Score have pulled out of presenting, leading to both programmes being taken off air today. Vincent McAvinney has the latest. We have lots to talk about the next hour, as it's been a busy week of action. What viewers should have seen on BBC One at noon. Instead, they got this. Now, in a change to the schedule, it's bargain hunt. Let's go bargain hunting. After presenter Alex Scott pulled out in solidarity with Gary Lineker. In a tweet, the former Lioness captain said it didn't feel right for her to present the show, but that she hopes to be back next week. Good afternoon, if you're just joining us on BBC One. There's set to be further disruption to the BBC's football coverage this afternoon, with final score presenter Jason Mohammed also pulling out. It's being replaced with the repair shop. Repair is something BBC bosses themselves are desperately trying to do, as the row with Gary Lineker over his tweets on the government's new asylum policy continues to escalate. How do you feel about the controversy? The corporation's former director general, Greg Dyke, says they've got it wrong. Well, I think uh, what the BBC has did yesterday was, was, was mistaken. And I've, I've, over the years since I left the BBC, never gone public criticising uh, the leadership of the BBC and the decisions they take, because I know what a difficult job it is. Gary Lineker's Match of the Day colleague, Ian Wright, has also given this warning to the BBC on his podcast. I'll tell you something. If they do, BBC, get rid of Gary Lineker, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm not staying there. On his own platform, he should be able to say what he wants to say. The BBC is still set to air Match of the Day tonight, but without a studio presenter, pundits or regular commentators. But a number of players and clubs have said they will not do usual post-match interviews with the BBC. So off we go. With commentators on BBC Radio 5 Live also joining the walkout this afternoon, those reliant on the nation's public service broadcaster to follow their team are left with an unprecedented outage. For BBC bosses, they're left on the back foot as the political controversy engulfs the corporation. Vincent McAvinney, ITV News. In other news, the health secretary has invited junior doctors for urgent talks to try and avert next week's planned strikes. 61,000 medical staff are planning to walk out from Monday to Wednesday in a bitter dispute over pay and conditions. England's top doctor has warned it will lead to unprecedented major disruption. The SNP leadership candidate Hamza Youssef says he was forced to call police about abuse he experienced during his campaign. Police Scotland say two people were arrested and charged in connection to reports of abusive and threatening behaviour. Global markets have been rattled by the collapse of an American bank that did most of its business with tech companies. Many of them now can't access their funds with Silicon Valley Bank, which closed its doors suddenly yesterday. And there was a break in the snow this morning, but yellow warnings remain in place for the north of England and southern Scotland until tomorrow. Then forecasters say milder temperatures are on the way. England and Wales are back in Six Nations action this afternoon as the tournament enters the penultimate round of fixtures. Ellis Genge is set to captain England for the first time as they look to keep their Six Nations hopes alive against France. But first, Wales will be hoping to lift themselves off the foot of the table and avoid the dreaded wooden spoon with a victory over Italy. You can see both matches here on ITV1 or on ITVX. Coverage of the Wales match starts after the news in just a few minutes, while England's kickoff is at 4.45. Now, finally. As Hollywood gears up to the 95th Academy Awards tomorrow, a lyricist from India is preparing to potentially make history at the ceremony. For the first time ever, a song from an Indian film is nominated for an Oscar, despite the country's long history of music being celebrated on screen. Fresh off a win at the Golden Globes, Natu Natu is one of the favourites to take home a prize. Our arts editor Nina Nana went to meet the man behind the music. For a country where music and dance are intrinsic to its vast film industry, 
and which is rarely featured at the Oscars, this is a significant moment. Natu Natu is the first song from an Indian film to get an Oscar nomination. <laughs> For the prolific lyricist who's already picked up a Golden Globe for the song, it is overwhelming. Proudest moment, happiest moment, greatest moment in my life. Natu Natu, which means dance, dance, comes from the Telugu language film RRR, set in colonial India. The scene where the song features was meant to be filmed in Hyderabad, but post-pandemic difficulties in bringing Western-looking actors to the country to play the British brought the team to Ukraine and the presidential palace in Kyiv just months before the Russian invasion. It was so lovely and the president was so graceful to offer us his palace to shoot. I really hope things and uh, you see the light and end of the town very soon. The song and high-energy choreography have proved hugely popular on social media, helping the film's profile and making Natu Natu a crossover hit. For India, winning a coveted Oscar is certainly worth making a song and dance about. Nina Nana, ITV News, in Hollywood. And that is all for now. There'll be no Tea Time News Bulletin today because of the rugby, but we'll be back with the latest tonight at 10.40. Have a great day.